It's also Friday night. What are you planning on doing? What are you planning on doing? What are you planning on doing? You are now listening to Limited Trust, a Devastator podcast. Let's get into it. Episode 77, Limited Trust, a Devastator podcast. I'm back, back again. <laughs> because it was back. <laughs> um, it's fucking a little bit chilly, but it's not so bad out here. Uh, my fucking Dremel is starting to fucking act up, and I just bought it like a few months ago. If I say a few months ago, it's probably six fucking months ago, so... Not only was I out here getting uh, set up, I was fucking using a compressor, trying to blow shit out of it. Like, because that's like the first thing I do anytime something is fucking, <laughs> something's on the fritz, is I try to use the compressor to blow f- imaginary shit out. Like, that's hindering its fucking. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's just fucking, I'm using it more and it's fucking, maybe I got to look into something a little more hardcore than, than Dremel products. Um, so anyway, a um, couple of things I wanted to go over, and they're not really updates, I don't think, but more just like, t- today's going to be, so you want to be the Ink Man Volume 3. <laughs> um, uh, and some other shit. So we'll get the other shit out of the way first. Um, on Thursday, I celebrated, which I will say I celebrated, um, and not in any sort of celebration, but... Uh, 16 years sober. Now, when I say that, I know people think 16 years off of drugs, but I have two very specific um, definitions for myself. Sober is sober off of alcohol and clean is, you know, clean off of drugs. And my clean time is, uh, shit, Aaron's 12. So in January, I was 12 years clean from doing any drugs at all. And, um, and sober from alcohol was 16 years um, in March, and um, so I, that 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 was that was cool, you know. Uh, fucking, it got its fucking my sobriety got its learner's permit, dog. <laughs> um, and and every time that comes up, you know, it's a big once a year thing, and I'm always thinking about it, and uh, and it makes me happy because. I know when I first fucking stopped drinking, I know even a lot of people close to me were like, yeah, okay. Like a lot, like a lot of people because of how fucking deep I was. And I wasn't like, uh, and I'm sure I've explained this before. I wasn't like, uh, I mean, I was like Mr. Party guy, go out and party. But also I was, I don't know, six days out of the week of a normal week drinking fucking by myself just drinking by myself and then you know maybe one day a week I'd I would go out or two days a week or whatever it was and uh I was on fucking intensive supervision felony probation for for a five years at least of my alcoholism so I couldn't really like quote unquote like go out around where I lived because they would do bar checks and shit and and there was like a a call system that the bars would do like when probation or parole showed up to the bar they would fucking someone would dip in the back and fucking call the other bars and they that bar would call the next bar call the next bar to call vfw call this and that but there you always ran that risk of fucking you were the first bar (laughs) you were at the first bar so a lot of times I, I ended up with a, a VFW auxiliary membership. Um, and so I was like, you know, I could go in there and that's a private place. So probation would have to like fucking kind of barter their way through the door because it was a private club. So I spent a lot of time drinking at the VFW and was most likely like the youngest person that was in there. But it was a fucking good time at the VFW. But anyway... I'm still a fucking auxiliary member. I just haven't paid my dues in mad long. But if I just pay my dues, I'll be able to go back and eat chicken figures at the VFW. <laughs> but um, 
So, so it's always, I, so I wasn't like a, I was this partier, you know, I'd like to party, but, um, I was, it wasn't like I was at the bar or at a party or at a event or gathering like every fucking day. It was, it was 90, 95, 98% fucking drinking by myself fucking and, and maybe someone would be at my house sometimes and shit. So it was like, it was fucked up. So a lot of people really thought that I was fucked. Like I remember when I turned 21, um, I, I bought a 12 pack of Molson Canadian and, uh, at this store and the guy says, he, he, he looked at me fucked up. I had never been there before. And, uh, and I put it up and he's like, ID and, um, and I gave him the fucking ID and it was like my birthday that day. And he goes, happy birthday. And I said, thank you. And he goes, here, here. And he gave me a fucking one or two uh, Andy's candies. <laughs> and he goes, what are you doing for your birthday? And I said, you're looking at it. And he said, and he like looked puzzled. He's like, you are not like having, f- being with family. And, and I said, Nope, <laughs> being with this Molson Canadian 12-pack dog, that's where I'm going to get started because I had my fucking Keystone Ice or fucking Milwaukee Ice or whatever the fuck I already at home, a couple left, and I was like, you know, I wanted to flex my shit, but I think I think I ended up going to my Aunt Donna's that night, and that was, uh, well, sorry, Aunt Donna, <laughs> like, I know she's such a sweetheart that she was fucking sick of my shit like I would be at her house all the time fucking getting drunk and all fucked up staying up they're all everyone there trying to sleep I'm all fucked up smoking fucking chain smoking and shit but I like being there and uh, so I would be there a lot and and a lot of people a lot of fucking people tolerated my fucking bullshit man and it's sad to think about that like I I put the people that I care about the most through all this shit and they were just like and and people would say like damn like for real you know in, in different in different ways not really verbatim um they'd be like you know like for real dog <laughs> what the fuck you doing and uh and i was like ah yeah yeah no nah, you know i'm i'm straight i'm straight oh yeah i was always straight uh huh and i was just all fucked up so so i celebrate that shit you know i don't really care too much about the clean thing um because I had bouts with drugs and I was most, I was probably addicted to drugs in one form or another, but they weren't ever like my biggest vice. Like I fucking love doing drugs and I love smoking weed and fucking and taking pills. I, you know, I really love doing it, but I was never, and I think I talk. I'm, I mean, I'm sure I talked about this in um, a bunch on here that, um, I, I was never like fucked up where I didn't have drugs. So I really, maybe the, 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 um, the extent of my addiction wasn't really, wasn't really noticeable to me because I always had drugs, you know, I do remember being mad and shit when I was really young, like teenage years and shit when I, when I couldn't find any herb or when I had just moved out to the country and I had to stretch a dime bag like a fucking week until I could go in and I didn't have any money. So even then, like throughout the week, I'm trying to figure out, you know, how to get some money so I could get, then I had to link up with my fucking a friend of mine, somebody, and then get a fucking dime and then bring it back out to the country from the neighborhood and all this shit. It was like a big fucking deal. And, and if, and sometimes it didn't pan out, like no matter how much I planned and made phone calls and hooked it up with people and I had the fucking money, you know, sometimes it just, you know, like anything, sometimes it just doesn't work. And I remember just being fucking mad and then scraping the fucking bong and then taking all the shit out of the bottom of the bong, not the resin. Everyone's like, oh, you have striking that resin. Nah, like the shit that's in the water and fucking dumping that out, spreading out. You spread it out real good, dry it out and smoke all that. Like all the burnt shit that sucked through. We call it gunk. And then, you know, the resin too, of course, that you did the whole, all of it at once, you know, and then maybe you could smoke for a night on some bullshit. And, uh, 
but I'll still be mad, you know, and be fucking mad and looking through everything and fucking do. I remember, I remember, I'm, you guys probably know this all too. It's like hitting the used screen like as much as you could. Just like <laughs> trying to fucking smoke the used screen over you know, the screen off fucking in there. Sometimes I would take it, fucking ball it up and put a new screen in and put the balled up, fucked up screen and start smoking that shit. So I, I maybe drugs was my problem a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but this was like teenager shit so when i got old enough and i had money and i had a vehicle then it wasn't like ever a thing and i was off probation then i was smoking a lot of weed and uh not a lot of pills but I've, i had my bouts with drugs so i don't really celebrate the drug thing as much like i know when i quit i know when i stopped and uh and and i, I don't know what day i know it was january so usually i tack on the year like february 1st you know, so I'm, I know it's been clean through January, so it's been 12 years. Um, in, in February, February 1st, it's been 12 years. February 1st has been 13, whatever the fuck. And I got to do it by my son's birthday. <laughs> so, uh, and you know what? I don't even know if that's right because it might be 13 years or, you know what I mean? Because he was months old. Someone do the math for me, would you? My son was born in September of 11 and I quit doing drugs in January of 12. So does that mean when I tack on my year, you know what I'm saying? Was it one year? Am I 12 years? Is it 13? Is it 11? Because my son's 12. So, so he turns, so he turned 12 in September. So then that following, you know, this February, we'll call it, um, would that be my that would be 12 right i don't know so you you guys know so i think that's 12 because as but but then i don't know you know because you don't start counting from one and he's turning 12 i don't fucking know whatever it's been i I don't even care about drugs (laughs) so uh so I, I get excited about that and and I get excited when people share like, oh, yeah, I seen somebody, I'm seven and a half years, you know, uh, fucking Dr. Steve's caffeine melts reach out to me. He's like, I'm 33 years off the shit and fucking, and, uh, and, you know, he helps people get off of opiates. So if you're in Florida and you're trying to kick that fucking opiate shit, uh, Thrive Pharmacy can fucking help you with that. And, uh, and, and there's just... I, I I get I get excited and I don't know if you could tell that or not but also I get excited telling stories about doing drugs and being a fucking degenerate when I quit drinking it was a, it was a bad fucking night and I was I was all shitty and and this is like as it gets further and further away the story becomes like less and less clear so then I like kind of remember like the main parts I remember I had Sparks. I was drinking Sparks. And I was with my cousin Amanda, her boyfriend at the time, and somebody else. And um, and I was in the mall, and I had a Sparks in my back pocket. And I was dr- walking through the mall already shitty and drinking a Sparks walking through the mall on like a fucking, I think it was a Friday night maybe. And I was fucked up. And... uh and that just is not good. And I'm so I, I actively on probation. I'm fucking. Uh, was I underage? I can't. No, no. I turned. Yeah, because I. I turned 21 and then I quit drinking. So I was probably of age. At, yes, 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 yes. Because I went to tops afterwards and fucking. Yes, I was of age. I was 21. But I'm out of county. Under the influence of alcohol. Drinking in public. And. uh and we ended up leaving there nothing happened there and then i was having like some fucking freak out episode i was all mad and fucking pissed off at taco bell in greece and uh and i left there and i was i thought i was i was gonna try to kill myself (laughs) but i couldn't get up this snowbank I remember trying to climb up like because it's down off the road Taco Bell and I was like trying to climb up it was a total drunken fucking mess and I probably wouldn't have you know walked out into the road in front of a tractor trailer or something that was my plan but I probably I was just mad and flipping out and fucking way way too drunk and it was time for me to go home and I was on fucking prescription medication like crazy 
And uh, so I ended up walking the tops in the back of that parking lot. And um, and I was so fucked up, I bought a four-pack of Tilt. And uh, the cashier was like, I don't know if I should sell you this. I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I was like, I'm, I'm not driving. I was like, I'm about to leave. I'm going home or some shit. You know, I was like fucking trying to convince. And this is just to the best of my recollection. And the only reason I remember all this is because... I ended up throwing the four pack of tilt out the fucking car window and saying, I'm never going to fucking drink again. This is fucking bullshit. Ah, fuck, ah. And I didn't. And I woke up that next day and I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I woke up March 15th and I was like, fuck. Nah, you can fucking stick with it. And then a couple of days and I was telling people at work and shit and they were like, yeah, okay, buddy. And now here we are. 16 years later and uh i remember just alcohol fucking alcohol specifically really fucking ruined a lot of things for me and just like opportunities and and things that happened in my life and and things that i should have been more present for and like fucking i I just i couldn't do anything without drinking and and i would find a way to drink like regardless i would fucking do whatever I had to do to be drunk at an event like I was the fucking man at coordinating rides because I'd never fucking when I was in active alcoholism I fucking never drove a vehicle drunk like I didn't do that my mother asked me not to do that she said don't fucking whatever you do I don't want you out there driving and drinking and shit and it was to the point like I had like two fucking beers at at, uh, Mike Dew's house and my car was, and he was the next street over from Tix, and fucking, and I had to go back to Tix, and I was like, I can't drive, I was like, y'all gotta drive, so that someone, and and Mike Dew at the time didn't drive and shit, so someone had to drive my car around the street back over to Tix's house, because I, you know, I told my ma I wouldn't fucking do it, and I, and I've, I kept my word, but, uh, so I was like the man at coordinating rides and shit. And, and I'm sure I thought I was the man and everyone else is just like, what the fuck? You know, like <laughs> fucking Kyle can not never fucking go anywhere. And, um, because I got, got to give him a fucking ride everywhere. Da, 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 da. So that was like, it, it really was a big hindrance to, I, I'm, I, you know, I learned a lot and I became like a, you know, the, the cliche, I became the stronger person by not, or I became the stronger person by fucking being an alcoholic, you know, like the typical fucking, uh, rehab kind of story. But I sometimes think, even though it's totally out of my control and it's so far gone now, but what, what things could have been if, if I was present for a lot more, you know, and, and I didn't, I didn't get on the phone and, 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 and allow alcohol to, uh, to guide my conversations and guide the, the, the people who I talk to and guide the fucking away messages on, on aim and, and guide, you know, like I, it was, the fuck is that song? It was like alcohol was, um, was piloting and I was just like a co-pilot so it fucking uh it 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 just controlled everything and uh and I would let it you know like Jesus take the wheel type shit and uh I last year I I uh put the song out that I did um about alcohol and I wrote it while I was still drinking so you can go to kyleconway.bandcamp.com and look for the song called problems and it's it's old it it doesn't sound good i made it when i was probably like 16 or 17 years old i mean it's over 20 years old but the way i wrote it and i was all fucked up when i wrote it too and i was all fucked up when i recorded it and uh but it really it's a it's a really good it's the song's about alcohol talking to me. It's alcohol. It's telling me what it thinks about me and shit. And um, so, if you got time, KyleConway.bandcamp.com and go listen to the song "Problems." And 
and it'll give you an insight of how I thought alcohol thought about me and which is which still kind of holds true it does hold true to this day and and how it just gave me all this this bravado to fucking do all this shit but really I was just looking like a fucking idiot you know and uh so I'm glad to be fucking free from that and everybody else who is too and everyone who's thinking about it and everybody who's just getting free from whatever it is they're on man fucking I'm with you and I understand it and fucking and we're all in this together as cliche as that sounds you know we're all fucking doing this and trying to figure this shit out together one day at a time cliche 12 step fucking first step to quitting is admitting dog and I was going to rehab um and I was I I wasn't ever um off of drugs and alcohol and during any rehab when I was at court ordered rehab when I was going to meetings and shit with my uncle all of that I was all and once I quit I never did any of that other shit so once I quit you know I I tell people I'm a program guy I'm a program guy you know because it's just the easiest way to say like I'm fucking you know I'm a recovering fucking addict so when people are like oh yo this and that what do you think about this or that you know I'm a program guy I don't fuck with that shit you know I don't fuck with any of that shit and uh so So I've been going on for 20 minutes about whatever. Here's my fucking pat on the back, stupid. (laughs) So, so, so you want to be the Ink Man volume three. And I got a feeling that over the years, if I continue doing this fucking podcast, there will be many volumes to this. And, um, this, this comes from like a bunch of different things, man. Um, recently there's been two new whatever you know two new ink men out there of course and uh one of them reached out to me and and everybody else basically um (laughs) and and uh the the kids said and if you're listening to this so shout out to you don't take this the wrong way and i tried to be nice to you but you'll see where I'm going with this, but you're probably not listening to it judging by, it seems like you think you know everything. So if you are here by any chance, by somehow, by thinking and using that brain of yours to say, damn, maybe the ink man might got something to say in this podcast. (laughs) Anyway, he messaged me talking about, I'm, I'm, I started a new ink brand. Okay. So, just just off the bat you're telling me that even in some very minor way that you are becoming the competition which it's not really a competition i always used to say it's not a competition it's a cooperation you know but but there is competition and we're all striving to 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 be i don't know about the best because it's so fucking um like it does it's trivial like i don't know if it's trivial it doesn't fucking matter like if you got the best and greatest this and that some people won't fuck with you because they don't want to fuck with you and and they don't like you you know and some people fuck with the other guy because they like him or they like you know the guy fucking posts cool memes or you know he seems like a nice guy whatever the fuck you know so having a having the the best and it's also that's just a matter of opinion too you know what I mean? Like, there's always better. There's always worse. And th- I don't know if there is a best. And if anything, you could ever... Have you ever heard me? And if you have, call me out on this. Have you ever heard me saying my shit is the best? Ever. Have you ever heard me say that shit? About any of the inks? Any of the... Any mixes? Is this the best? It's the best. Nah. No. Not that. Like, I'll say that the scribes are fucking better than the other people that are bootlegging them yes I, that's a hundred percent sure um but anyway um so the dude hits me up he's like yo you know I'm, I'm starting this brand blah blah you got any tips and i said something like i said something like um what the fuck did i say to him i'm trying i'm trying to remember i was gonna pull it up Oh, I don't know what the fuck this person is doing. I don't know. Um, I said something like, um, 
sorry, I'm taking forever to get to the fucking point. I lost my train of thought, as you know. Uh, oh, I said, um, I, I'm looking at your label. I said, just keep pushing or keep grinding or something like that. I said, and be careful about the claims that you make. I said, saying you're the best, regardless if you are or not, will make people automatically be a hater and start shitting on you. I'm looking at the kid's label. It says, the best staining ink, blah, 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 all this shit. Like, it says that. It says it right on. Fucking, um, hold on. Let me read this shit to you. So then you could get a better idea that I'm not just, like, fucking making this up. You know what I mean? Where the fuck is this kid? I'm, like, far away from the house, so the fucking Wi-Fi ain't really what it's supposed to be. Oh, there he is. Okay. And then, oh, come on, now it's not fucking loading. This is some bullshit. Nothing's working. Okay. It says, oh, it doesn't say the best. Super stainy alcohol-based ink. This handmade premium ink, which you shouldn't say because there's premium is out there. This handmade premium ink is one of the best stain inks on the market. Share your reviews on Instagram. Okay, so that's a that's that's quite the claim, right? Is oh oh no 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 that's his that's his revised shit. He must have changed that. Is one of the best because then I go two fucking things back and it says super stainy alcohol based ink. This handmade made ink is the best stainy ink on the market. I'm screenshotting this shit right now. <laughs> All right, so. I, I, I hear that, right? I'm like, all right. I, I read that and I said, you know, fucking chill with the claims. <laughs> First thing. To, oh, if it'll load, if it'll load. Let me turn off the Wi-Fi. It's still trying to connect to the shit. Then it'll probably open. <laughs> yeah, here it is. I said... I said some. I said grind it out. I would stay away from the claims, regardless if it's one of the best. When you say that, people naturally want to be haters and say the opposite. This is the message I get back. Honestly, I don't give a flying fuck about the haters. If my ink is good, it's good, and I'm gonna try to make it one of the best. Thanks for the tips, though. Thumbs up. And then right after that, shit. I hope it's as good as yours. So he must. He must have started thinking about it, right? Like all then because i didn't say anything back <laughs> and he's like, he must have been thinking oh shit put my foot in my fucking mouth all right so I-, I give you a tip right off the bat with your unfounded brand and product of you probably shouldn't say that okay and you tell me i don't give a fuck about the haters blah, blah. listen listen to me now this is right here you want to be the ink man volume three you need everybody to like you when you start this shit. Once you get big, then it doesn't fucking matter. But when you first are starting, you need everyone to like you. You need to be the fucking nicest guy ever. You need to be the most likable, fun guy ever. You know what I'm saying? You you have to do that. Because... If not, with that, I don't give a fuck. I'm the fucking blah, blah, rebel fucking shit. Dude, people are going to be like, tool, get the fuck out of here. You know, and maybe your shit is the best, but they're going to say, who's this fucking cheese dick? How how long does it take for him to ship? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. So, right. So then I, I look, I don't know if it was the next day or whatever. And there's another message from him. And it says, how do you stir something? And that was all I could see. And right as soon as I read that, I knew. I was like, he's talking about the stir, right? And there's this there's this joke in my full-time job that people want the magic spray that they spray on the floor, that they spray on the grout, that they spray on the fucking whatever, and they just take a rag and they wipe it off. And then, bam, it's clean, you know, like a fucking infomercial. And nobody wants to hear that you got to get down and scrub that motherfucker. You got to use the chemical. You got to work the chemical. You got to scrape. You got to do this and that. You know, that there's a fucking, there's no magic chemical. 
So when, once the kid says stir this, that I know he's talking about the fucking stir. Dude, it's a fucking, it's a stir, it's a lab stir. It's not fucking, I mean, take five fucking minutes before asking me and just, just type in what you think it might be into Google. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just said to myself, there's got to be a fucking better way. And I said, oh, yeah, this has to exist. And there it is. And it's not good for everything. I don't make standard fluid with the stir. You can't do that shit. It's too fucking thick. It doesn't work. That's only for alcohols. That's for mainly base and, you know, churning up shit of, uh, with that consistency. But anyway, I know he's thinking fucking... I know what he wants. He wants the magic fucking, he wants the, so he's asking, and he asks other people recipes and shit. So he wants the, he wants the magic recipes. He wants the magic tools to make it happen. And then he's to make the best ever and be the best. And that's just not the fucking way it is. Like it's not. And, and it drives me fucking crazy. (laughs) And then there's other shit that comes out. The best, the best. What is with these people in the fucking best? And then this other dude, the best, dude, the best, blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Son, my shit is not the best. <laughs> if anything, I'm out there saying, yo, it works. It does what it's supposed to do. You know, if fucking, yeah, the right buff man, the right fucking whatever. You know, it could wipe right off. I had someone the other day saying like, oh, the shit came right off. The violet came right off of this gas pump. I'm like, yeah, that's what it, I mean. It's that's meant for, you know, painted surfaces and shit. Like, I'm not surprised. You know, it's like it, all this stuff. <laughs> and it, it fucking drives me crazy. And I don't know if maybe it's because I put myself out there like that. But it's son. <laughs> I, I give you a tip. And you say, fuck, I don't give a fuck about that. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> so then it was the stir. So I tell him like, yo, that's just, that's just basically an agitator. Like it's just for making my base for alcohol shit. That's what I use it for. Yeah. But how do you stir it? I, how do I, well, with a fucking tongue depressor, let's yeah. With a tongue depressor. with a, I got a big stick in my garage or, or no, no. Who said that? Did he say that? Who said that? Where was the person I was talking about said they got a big stick in their garage or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I mean, whatever. He uses a big stick. I don't fucking know. You got to stir it. It's fucking stirring. It's mixing. What the fuck, man? And you got the best ink on the fucking market and you're asking me how to stir this shit? Dog. <laughs> so I know maybe I'm, maybe I'm going off a little bit and I'm fucking, because I believe me. If you're listening to this, you know that I know that I'm really like not shit. <laughs> but what I do know is how all this stuff works. And and it it just fucking drives me crazy. It's like the next thing that drives me crazier is sponsor me. You know, the 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 second thing is I'm about to be the best. Yo, shout out Club Ghoul <laughs> because that motherfucker is the real deal. He's the real deal. And there's there's another person that, that just kind of returned and shit and says all kinds of crazy shit and fucking I don't, whatever, dog. Club Ghoul is fucking where it's at. If you're not fucking with me, fuck with them. Fuck with him because he's a fucking scientist and and he fucking knows his shit and he, he respects the craft and he fucking, he's the fucking that I aspire to be like, like club ghoul, you know what I mean? But I'm, we're, but we're doing something different, you know, like he's, he's focused on, on the chemicals and, 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 in the fucking process. And I got this whole thing, you know, I got like a, this big umbrella and that's just one of the parts to it. But I remember at first I wasn't telling him shit because it, it happens like every time, you know, it, like I, every time someone new comes out and they're, oh, 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 and then after a while, I'm like, oh, homeboy's still here. Oh, let me go look at this shit. Oh, shit. He's, oh, shit. He's catching shit on fire. Oh, shit. He's got, he, look at all this fucking array of testing. I said, oh, he's, he's in the book. He's, he's, this guy's good. And I respect that shit. And I got mad respect for him. And, uh, 
So, so I can give it up. Like that's he's where it's at. Constantly innovating, constantly, and, and we and we share these things with each other, talking like fucking, like. And I told him, I said, yo, you know, I had to feel you out first. And, and I'm not shit. Again, I'm not shit. I've just I've been here. I've been here a little while. And I'm I'm very cautious. You guys know this. I'm very cautious with the circle. You know, like there's I don't tell everything to everyone. I tell but 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 if you're if you're in it, I'll let you know. You know what I'm saying? But so so wanna be the ink man volume three. Don't come out making fucking claims that your shit is the best. Even if it is, don't do it. You look like a fool, okay? Don't do that. Next is don't send a hundred messages to every maker, okay? Because I talk with Club Ghoul. He talks with other people. They talk with other people. And you're going to end up being the laughing stock of all this shit. Of motherfucking being like, oh, oh, he asked me two. He asked me two. He asked me three. Don't do that. And and also, don't... I don't know, man. I guess I'm, I try to be just more of a regular person when it comes to this shit. And, and in, the, in the end... After all of this is said and done, me, Club Ghoul, Crink, whoever else, this ain't the fucking cure for diabetes. All right, it's fucking ink, dog. <laughs> it doesn't. It's 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 really not that big of a deal. It's it's fine to have trade secrets and and to have your recipe and to have the way you do shit, but like. People who go, who are like, I don't know, man. Like, it's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say, like, it's not that big a deal. And people who are, oh, fuck, no, 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 I don't do this, I don't do that. Oh, oh, oh. All right, man, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in a fucking good mood and I shouldn't be. I got mad work to do. I gotta eat still. I wanna watch a little show. All I've been doing is fucking working. <laughs> so happy sobriety. Fucking 237 is out. That shit is lovely. I love the 237. Go get you some of that shit. If you like fucking shit up, painted surfaces only, please. And if you made it this far, Machine Studio. Shout out to Machine Studio. Do your shopping there. Shout out to Club Ghoul. Do your shopping there. Shout out to fucking Dynamo Prince. Shout out to fucking MKA. Shout out to Gasp. Shout out fucking Draco, my man. Fucking shout out to fucking Billy the Marine. Shout out Mike Do. Who else we got? Who else is who is who else is out there? Who else we've been breaking balls? Yo, shout out to everybody who's got a sober date. If you're fucking 24 hours in or 24 years in, fucking shout out to you. I love you. We're all in this shit together. And and if I'm I'm I, I'm sorry for sounding like I, I'm I really don't think I'm shit. I really don't believe so. I'm a regular ass dude. I work a regular ass job. I'm doing regular shit. I, I don't I, I don't mean to sound like braggadocious or anything like that. And if I do, and if I ever do at any time about anything, like fucking check me. Because really, if anything, I feel like I talk down about myself a lot. I talk about a lot of degeneracy or, you know, I tell cool fucking stories like the blue top story or whatever. And I, and I don't have that shit no more. Like I don't have any of that shit. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't have that. I don't have my small little mini drug empire that I had in the middle of nowhere town. You know what I mean? I don't have that. <laughs> I don't, I don't have, I still own the challenger, but it's off the road. It's sitting in my mama's fucking yard. Like it's a fucking lawn ornament. <laughs> you know, I have a, a, a fucking, a, a 2010 challenger with a fucking 360,000 miles and it's all duct taped on the front end and shit. You know, like, uh, I don't really, I don't think I brag about anything or, and if I do, let me know. I, I really try not to. I, I, I try to tell people my real life and how I felt and how I thought about shit. And, and, and in the end, in, at right now, at this day, at this point in my life, 
work hard, be an honest, fucking hard working motherfucker and and just try to keep it real with everybody, everyone that you can. And uh and you know, sometimes you do have to fucking let people down gently, but sometimes other times sometimes you're not doing people any favors by fucking by letting them down gently and you and it's case by case you know and i'm really just trying to to be the best person i can to be the best father i can to be a fucking role model to the people around me and uh and and i'm not shit and i and i I just i want to be a good friend you know i'm not shit i'm a fucking a blue collar fucking employee you know what i mean like i'm 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 not shit but I'll, I'll, you'll always get your shit and I'm not going to fucking steal from you, you know, like, so I love you guys and and I appreciate you following me along on this journey. That's why there's 6,500 or whatever posts or however many 6,000 posts on Devastator. Someone ridiculed me about that one time. Like, yo, yeah, post everything. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. And if anyone ever feels like it, they can go back to fucking day one. And they can look through everything and follow the whole journey the whole fucking way. And 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 I, I, I left that there. I could be cool and edgy and have two posts all the time. You know? But I don't. I don't want to do that. I want you to be able to go back. It's If you really think about it, if you want to be the fucking Ink Man Volume 3... Go back to go back six thousand posts. All that time you spent asking motherfuckers what to do, go back and the whole fucking blueprint to putting all this shit together is right there. And and then that's if you look at what 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 we got going on and say, that's cool, that's something that I would like. And if you look at at, at Devastator and you say like that's something that I would like, fucking square one is right there. Take your time, go back to the beginning and just flip through and look and see and, and study because that's what I did. And and it's all right there, the whole journey, how it all unfolded. So it's all right there and it's all out there to read and to try, figure it out, you know, but that's it. I love you guys. You guys are the best. Yo, shout out Pep. What's up, Pep? I love you, dog. Dick, I understand that you're not going to be coming to see me. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you and I hope you're doing well and uh and you know you can always give me a fucking call. So and all you guys, man. I love everybody. I love you all. And thank you for coming here week after week. It's a Friday night. What are you planning on doing? Love you, Gary.